Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is. Michael Savage. There needs to be a concerted effort to address the systemic racism in our criminal justice system. And that requires a very clear agenda for retraining police officers, looking at ways to end You're racial lying, profiling, demagogue. finding more ways to really bring the disparities that stalk our country into high relief. Are there any police listening to this show who will, who will vote for a Democrat all the way down to a town kennel master? Are there any idiotic police left in America who still vote Democrat because they think that they are your friend? Do you have any idea what went on last night? Now, I know it's a holiday and most of America is asleep doing nothing. I get that. And I know that we've gone from I have a dream to I have a scheme in such a short period of time. I know that we're living in an age of pure race warfare and demagoguery, thanks not solely to Barry Obama. But now look who's jumping into the breach. That vicious carpetbagger, Hillary Clinton, has the audacity to pretend she's, a, she's an oppressed minority. And who does she choose to attack last night? The police who are getting knocked off like bowling pins by criminals in the street who have been given dispensation by Barry and by this sick, twisted attorney general that we have, going back to the last sick attorney general, who has basically said to the police, if you do your job and you arrest a criminal, we will arrest you. So now the thugs are shooting police through police car doors, beating cops up every time they're stopped, and now into the breach there comes the progenitors of a new race warfare in America, Hillary Clinton and that creature from the Lower East Side of Manhattan, that thing, Bernie Sanders. Who I, have, I, have, I have a contempt for Bernie Sanders that you could only understand if you grew up where I grew up, and you know the type of low life he really is. I do. I read him from the first second he spritzed his way onto the stage. And, of course, not so unexpectedly, the attacks have started from uh, the Hillary camp, and they've dug up his past. And we will talk about Bernie Sanders' actual and overt anti-American extensive communist past from the get-go. Who this spritzer really is. And of course, Chairman Bernie Mao, Chairman Bernie Mao would be the greatest disaster to ever hit the United States of America. Now the only reason he's gotten this far, as I said to you before, is because he was set up by the Clinton campaign as a boogeyman to make Hillary look centrist i hope you understand that he's not going to win but he's there to make her look centrist compared to him otherwise he wouldn't have lasted three minutes i want you to get that clear get it through your head but this kind of racism that is coming out of her mouth should indicate that any cop who ever votes for her in fact i don't know how any white person could vote for any democrat ever again this is a party of race hatred forget about john f kennedy jr whatever is whether it's jr or not Forget about the Kennedys. Forget about that whole history of the Democrat Party when it once was for the little guy. The Democrat Party today has devolved into a party of class warfare, race warfare, you name it, pitting one group against the other. How could anyone who is listening to this program ever vote for a Democrat again is beyond me. But I watched the debate last night for 20 minutes. I could only take it. It was not really a debate. It was one commie trying to upstage another communist, anti-white bigotry spilling from their lips, from the white ruling class, of course, set up by that idiot moderator, Lester Holt, who is an embarrassment to the word journalism. Lester Holt is so bad, that's the guy who moderated the debate last night between uh, Mrs. Marx and Mr. Lenin. Lester Holt made Sean Penn look like a Republican. And as I said, we've gone from I have a dream to I have a scheme. All I watched were two nauseating ruling class whites pandering to minorities. And we're going to play some of the sound on the Savage Nation. 
It's sickening to listen to it, but you have to hear it. Because if you haven't made up your mind, I don't know how you could ever vote for a Democrat again. I don't understand it. So let's look to the stories that I found to be interesting that I put up on michaelsavage.com. And I'll give you my phone, number, 855 400 savage 855 400 7282 Please do not waste my time with the fake uh, uh, arguments going on amongst the uh, talk crowd intelligentsia about the differentials between Trump and Cruz. I'm not going to fall into the sand trap. I will not become a shill of the Republican National Committee. Leave me alone. Save it for your blogs. Okay? Save it for other radio shows that specialize in supporting Ted Cruz as though he's the, the savior of the universe. I will say it again since I opened up the door. Ted Cruz cannot win in a general election. He looks seedy. He looks like an oil can Harry. I've asked people about him who are not very political, people I run into who may know me. And I say, what do you think of Ted Cruz? You know what? I've, I swear to God, this is what one of them said to me. I won't vote for him. He's not an American. I said, what do you mean he's not an American? No, I don't want to vote for a Hispanic for president. I heard that from a white person. Straight up. An unguarded commentary. Another one said he looks sneaky. Another one said he takes as much money from big business as all of them do. Who is he fooling? So I know about his wonderful credentials at Harvard. I get that. And I know that he says the right things for the talk show crowd. I get that as well. But to some people who really know what's going on and don't like Trump because he has New York values, that's a joke. Uh, some people who really know who are very conservative and fighting the fight for 20 years have said Ted Cruz conservative. Ted Cruz, they said, is a Canadian who went to Harvard, who moved to Texas as a gerrymandered uh, in a gerrymandered district and adopted a Texan accent. That's what they say about him. I want to talk instead about the big issue, the big issue of racism and hatred in America on this Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And again, at reiterating how we have gone under Barry Obama from I have a dream to I have a scheme. So let's begin on michaelsavage.com on the top right from the New York Post. These are their headlines. Uh, how Obama has turned back the clock on race relations. New York Post. Gateway Pundit, youths, youths, that's an acronym, a, 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 you don't use the right word anymore, it's the word youths. Youths jump couple at D.C. Metro Station in latest knockout style beating. The youths are all African American, and the couple was white, bothering nobody. They got beaten to a pulp. Next story, female Al-Azhar professor says, Allah allows Muslims to rape non-Muslim women. That's from Jihad Watch. We realize it's the religion of peace. We realize that we're not allowed to criticize Islam because it may offend Barack Obama. But do you know what just happened in England? <clears throat> Even liberal British Prime Minister David Cameron has said that Muslim immigrants to England who do not learn English could be deported. Mr. Obama, we hope you're listening. Because even Cameron knows what happens to a nation that permits the undigested, the undigested tsunami of a foreign religion to penetrate a nation. As part of a plan designed to help Muslim immigrants integrate into British life and culture. Isn't that interesting, the word culture? Now, who has been using culture for 21 years? Why, I think it was me. Prime Minister David Cameron announced $28 million in public funding for English language classes. But the plan comes with a strict caveat. Those immigrants could face deportation if they don't improve their English language skills within five years. Cameron wrote in an editorial in the London Times, Yes, we have responsibilities to migrants, but they have responsibilities to us. Uh, that's a shock. You mean they don't just come here to have children and get welfare and plan the overthrow of the nation? He said at the moment someone can move here with very basic English and there's no requirement to improve it over time. We will change that. We'll now say if you don't improve your fluency, that could affect your ability to stay in the UK. That's a shocker. That's a shocker. That's just a shocker. Now, if you are one of the fools who believes that we need refugees and immigrants, listen carefully to what I'm about to read to you. This came out from a business publication this morning, Joe Weisenthal, who I believe is a very liberal writer in Bloomberg Business, which is a very liberal publication. Are you ready for this? As the crash in commodities prices spreads economic woe across the developing world, Europe could face a wave of migration that will eclipse today's refugee crisis 
says Klaus Schwab, executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. Look how many countries in Africa, for example, depend on the income from oil exports, Schwab said in an interview ahead of the WEF's 46th annual meeting. That's the Davos group. This is the world power, the economic power of the world. He said, now imagine one billion inhabitants. Imagine they all move north. I want you to think about that. Think about a billion Africans and Middle Easterners moving north. What do you think will happen to Europe? What do you think will happen to America unless we fight this migration by slamming our borders shut, building a cement wall that you can't get through without proper papers? I know that this is anathema to the communists listening to this show who believe in open borders. And most of the Swedish girls who were raped were believing in uh, open borders. They were, they were brainwashed in their Swedish schools. They didn't want to say one word against the migrants until they were touched, felt, raped over New Year's Eve. And, of course, now they awaken to the fact that they are inviting their own demise through this invasion. You know, over the weekend I got an email from a friend in San Francisco, he sort of hang around. He hangs around in the cafes a little bit. He's a very nice guy. He's a good friend of mine. And he said to me, well, there's a, a memorial tonight at one of the cafes for one of the guys got killed over the weekend. I said, when he got killed? I said, who is he? He said, a lifetime communist, 69 years old, lifetime anti-American communist, was standing on Ninth and Market Street, downtown San Francisco in the afternoon, when a black man walked up, punched him in the mouth for no reason, his head hit a curb and he died. I said, that's disgusting. That's horrible. Has it changed his policies? He said, I doubt it. In fact, at the eulogy today, they probably are screaming for more openness and more fighting against the racism of America. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what to happen, ladies and gentlemen. What has to happen, rather for this country to awaken before it's absolutely impossible to awaken. But this is just the beginning of the show. I haven't yet gotten into the brainwashing that's going on to your children, what they're doing to your children in the colleges. Portland Community College is going to devote an entire month to whiteness shaming. Whiteness shaming, where white children are going to have to apologize for their race. We have moved from a call for racial equality to a South African style purging of the white race in America. And you have to understand how this, how this happens. It starts amongst the so-called intelligentsia in the colleges. It then spreads to the streets. And if you don't see the interlocking relationship between the white communists on tenure and what is happening to our nation, maybe I can help you. Maybe I can ask you to read Government Zero and study the references. I know you liberals like references. Maybe you can understand that you're digging your own grave and throwing the lime in to go with it. I don't know. I actually do think that most of... You know, and I've got to back up a bit. You know, it's easy to bash liberals. and We've all done it. We've heard it for years. I went to an art opening Saturday in San Francisco in the rain. I wanted to get out of the house. Most liberals are nice people. If you look at them, they're very nice people. They dress nice. They smell nice. They talk nice. They're not bad people. They just want to get along with everybody. But they don't understand that that's not how the real world works. I study the birds of San Francisco Bay. And I'll tell you something about the survival of the fittest in a minute when I return right here on the Savage Nation. From I have a dream to I have a scheme in one generation. Now we've devolved to the point where police who do their job are called racists. Thugs are elevated to the White House level. Colleges are devoting months to whiteness shaming, all because of seven years of Barry. And into the breach there steps a street communist from New York named Bernie Sanders to make Hillary look centrist. Bob on WJR, you love Bernie Sanders. Tell us why. Because he's the only one that's uh, going to break up the big banks. And the big banks... Uh... They're out to destroy this country. Look what they did. We were at war. We were at, at war against the Islamo-fascists, Islamo uh, Islamo and uh, they want to kill us and destroy 